Hi everybody, this is the combo card, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion. Your host, hi, and welcome back to the combo card. And if you haven't uh, subscribed already, I would hope that you would uh, would do so. But also to watch the entirety of this video as I'm trying to get the time up on this channel. First week or so has been really uh, quite strong. And I thank you. So here we have another IDW disaster. And I know you really want to know what's going on about it because that, that is what people are talking about. Well, this is an article from Bound in the Comments. It's written by John De La Rose, YouTuber. Heather Rantos and Ryan North's new Star Trek one-shot condescendingly <laughs> shouts, I do know how to read. I am a college graduate. Shouts fascists at readers to lecture them on politics. The state of Star Trek has sunk lower than lower decks with the Day of Blood event high-end comic. Shaxx's best day, he's not his best day, by the way, which places the security officer Shaxx's, Shax, Shaxx's, it doesn't matter, in a senseless battle against the Klingons. Edited by the infamous Heather the Dope Antos. I would mention that that uh, she sent her simp army after your host and, uh, and uh, people like... Uh, Fabian the Caesar begged me, begged me behind the scenes to, to leave her alone. I'm just going to talk about her books and her behavior just like the rest of them. But the book is one of the worst Star Trek comics produced to date. That's pretty bad. The character Shaxis is known for his over-the-top gritty fighting style, which would fit well with this video game-esque plot to get to the Defy, where he faces off against more and more dangerous Klingons. Except for the character delving into world, real world politics to make the story unbearable to read. The first page reads like a wordy recap of the event itself. More of a summary than a solid start to a one shot comic. However, a wordy start to a comic with a dent plot isn't the worst of what occurs in this issue. Oh, really? This is a Heather Anto special? I mean, really, what could possibly go wrong? I mean, quite frankly. On the book's second page, the main character, Shaxis, starts ranting about fascists to the Klingons. This is what happens to fascists. Fascists. This is like me and my argument with, uh, with uh, uh, Bubbly Edna. It's like, why are you being so grumpy? I'm not grumpy, grumpy. You know, it's the same kind of, I mean, real childishness. He says that, I mean, this is the kind of thing you want to see from an from a action hero. You know, I mean, just change the word. This is what happens to grumpies, grumpies. It's complete total stupidity. He says an eye-rolling cringe dialogue. The Klingons prose that they're not fascists multiple times, but Shaxis makes it clear they are stand-ins for modern conservatives in America. All right. This isn't the first time the Klingons have been used as monstrous versions of Republicans. In Star Trek Discovery, the bloodthirsty redesigned Klingons shouted a battle cry. Remain Klingon, which is meant to be an allegory for the catchy Trump slogan, Make America Great Again. The thinly veiled political message didn't sit well with most fans, as Discovery has been one of the most reviled, and a uh, heart means, actually John Delos says, most reviled of Star Trek shows in general. Now, I am a Star Trek fan, but I have not watched any of this garbage and read any of the, I'm not, I, I think I have had one, like, Star Trek book. And that book was uh, written by uh, and drawn by uh, John Byrne. Uh, but, you know, I none of this stuff interests me. I got to say, John Delaros is taking quite the quite the bullet for us for reading this stuff and doing videos on this and, and writing about it. Writer Ryan North decided to make his political messaging more overt, making the odd choice of leaving little notes at the bottom of most of the pages of the, of the comic. What, these like liner notes? When Shaxis first begins his rants on fascists, North chimes in with his own voice. If you're a fascist, why am I doing the, the, <laughs> I'll use it. If you're a fascist, then wow, have you picked the wrong comic to read? And also, transmedia franchise to enjoy and political system to subscribe to. Honestly, just a series of bad decisions going on in your brain, huh? Who wants totalitarianism? Who wants communism? And that's what he's promoting. All that stuff is satanic. It's clear the writer meant to chastise fans who might vote differently than him. Or why would you put that on the second page? 
That's not a great decision by Heather. Or or support right-wing politicians to the point where he warns them they have no place even watching Star Trek. Not only that, but condescending readers that they'd better agree with his politics or they're making or they're making bad life choices as being arrogant. And this is from the Marxist preaching handbook. Absolutely. This is this is what religious people do. It destroys any sense of immersion in the comic, forcing readers to stop and focus on those on these odd notes on every page. This is the job of an editor to make sure a writer is raining dead, especially when dealing with a beloved franchise like Star Trek. She, you know, Heather doesn't even know what, what day her books are coming out. How's she going to bring in a writer that's putting this stuff in? She actually continues to lecture the readers on fascism on, and on another page. Stating out the Klingons, right. You just truly believe a charismatic strong man when he says your side would, should have absolute power over your people. And now you're using force to give it to him in a coup. Remind me where have I heard that before? Only in your head, Ryan. North didn't hear it in Nazi Germany. As Adolf Hitler was appointed by an elected government in their system. Nor would many consider Hitler to be a strong man. It appears likely he's referring to Donald Trump and trying to frame the January 6, 2021 peaceful protest of U.S. elections fraud as an attempted coup. Another point where Anthos should have done robust editing rather than leave for readers to scratch their heads is the why a Bajoran would be worrying about modern-day American politics. Isn't that right? This is in the past. He's worried about stuff in the past. This is, this guy's unhinged. This Shaxis, he's a very unhinged guy. He, I mean, this is like some of the monkey crap you hear about these, these Marxists complaining about uh, the Indians back in 500 years ago that were doing human sacrifice before Columbus got here. Once the readers get done with lectures, the book returns to senseless and sen- stupid action, which is very little payoff or worth to storytelling. It reads much like many of the monotians to event comics Marvel and DC produce, which had burn readers out on events and on collecting comics in general. That's not good. Um, I don't know what the actual overall market has been of Star Trek, the comic books. Um, uh, I was barely a, a Star Wars Star Wars buyer of comics, uh, but I don't know what the what the market is for Star Trek. Uh, but obviously, this is another another award winner. I think this deserves an Eisner, don't you think? This is the kind of stuff that the Eisners give out. They love failure. I mean, they love giving out awards for people that are doing so well. I mean, to have the character. This is what they do in politics. They, they, and this propaganda, they beat you senseless with it. And this continues on to this day. And unfortunately, um, these companies don't care. IDW is sinking, sinking, sinking. Uh, and now you understand why. I mean, they've lost uh, so much money. And they don't care. I mean, they think that... Uh, that this is what needs to be put out. All they care about is propaganda. And they're going to keep producing this. you know. And, and Heather will go on to another company. I mean, she's done such a great job. Let's, let's look at her job so far. She did a great job at Marvel. She got fired. Then she went to Valiant Comics. And she did such a great job. They t- get, told her to get the hell out of there. And now she's at uh, IDW. Uh, running the different properties of... You know, CBS and Paramount. Isn't that great? And I would mention that uh, IDW, they lost, you know, G.I. Joe and they lost uh, Transformers to Robert Kirkman. So they're losing these properties. They they can't afford. And I, I understand. I got uh, very uh, tough news because I was very big on the series. It was Walt Simon's Ragnarok. The IDW's not doing any more creator-owned stuff now. So that series, I don't know what's happened with that series. Maybe he'll do something at Image with it. Um, or maybe even, you know, Walt should, should crowdfund it. I mean, that's a great series. The third buy, man, that's so great. But people would buy it if he crowdfunded it. But anyway, that's a separate thing. But Heather has brought her dark cloud of failure to another property and another company. What's the encore? Well, you know what you got to do now. Got to go to D.C., I have to go to DC Comics and uh, help out Tom Taylor and all the rest of those uh, award winners over there to uh, bring in 
more videos, more um, goofing on them, and more mobs. We need more Twitter mobs to attack people. Yeah, I mean, we, we, when was the last time you saw so many adults doing this? From the com from the privacy of their phones, the privacy from their computers. Boy, it's, it's wonderful, isn't it? Well, you let me know what you think about this video. Of course, please subscribe to the Comic Book Hut. Have a good night, and I'll see you later.